Hello, and welcome to Change the Face of Yoga, teaching toddlers through golden oldies. I'm very excited to be talking to lots of yoga teachers who will explain their passion for teaching yoga to students with different ages, physical fitness levels, wellness levels, and different goals. They will explain the benefits of yoga for these students and will be including teacher tips and pose modifications. I am Stephanie Cunningham of Yoga Lightness, and I've been teaching over 50s for 10 years. So this area is my passion and the passion of many other yoga teachers that you will be listening to in this series. Thank you so much for listening, and let's get started. This is episode 56 of Changing the Face of Yoga, and my interviewee is Ashley Adams, who has recently established a new yoga studio, and we talk about building community to support that studio. Let's listen. This is Stephanie Cunningham with Changing the Face of Yoga, and I have a very interesting guest today, Ashley Adams. Ashley is a fitness expert, and she's been teaching fitness education for over 10 years. She owns her own yoga studio, Fit Yoga Factory in Tarpon Springs, Florida in the USA. She and I are going to talk about building a community and that she has classes based on unique systems that can be adapted for people of any ability, which is great. Ashley, is there anything you'd like to add to that? introduction. And also I'll say that I'm the author of Zen and the Wonder Woman Complex. It's uh, actionable steps for moms to build their Wonder Woman toolkit so can they can have peace and fun in their lives all at the same time. Great. I'm really interested in how you built a community. I looked at your website and it was extremely interesting. You talked about the urban vibe and you provide kids instruction during school holidays, spring break, and you have an incredible amount of classes and variety. So I figure that must all fit in, but tell me what building a community means to you. I think I think building to me is creating a building a community to me is creating a safe, comfortable space. People tend to for whatever reason, have this preconceived notion about what a yoga studio is and the type of people that go. And I wanted to break some of that down and just say, hey, you know, I'm a regular mom with kids and the mom hustle and struggles and do just doing life like everybody else. I just happen to own a yoga studio and that's what I do for a living. So I try and bring a real life perspective to being a part of a yoga studio and being connected with people. We're not always super duper flexible some days, you know, sometimes things just aren't in your practice and that's completely okay. Would you say that you mostly have moms and kids or do you have a wider variety of students than that? We have a good, healthy mix. We have students that are as young as 13 and as old as 73. We're serving a broad swath of women that come through the studio and some men as well, too, that come in and they just like from what I've gathered from talking to members, they like the openness and the vibe of the studio. So we do have our fair share of kids stuff that goes around in here, goes on around here. A lot of times we'll have moms that come in and go, I can't come to class because the kids this, and I'll tell them, bring them, bring them. As long as they can sit and hang out quietly in some way, shape or form, or even if they make a bit of noise, it's okay, they're kids. And the other moms that come into classes, they're really understanding because they've been there. You know, we've been through what it's like to have a three-year-old <laughs> yes. and my babysitter bailed at the last minute, but this is the only hour of the day that I have to do anything to myself. So I'm not, not the one that'll say, well, you cannot bring your child, just bring them. Come on, we'll okay, make it work. great. I like that. I've been there with the toddlers, yes. <laughs> Would you say that moms are your real interest or just that you're so open and welcoming to moms that they really love to come to your studio? I think it's a little bit of both. I think uh, my crusade from the mom perspective is to really push for this idea that the majority of us are not Stepford wives. You know, we mom somewhere in between Stepford wife and hot mess. 
that that's what the majority of our lives actually look like. Sometimes you're spot on and everybody's homework gets done on time and dinner is cooked and everyone has ironed clothes and hair is great. And then some days somebody leaves their backpack in your car and you're leaving the leaving to go on the road and they just don't have a backpack. You know, some days it looks like that and that both of those are equally as awesome. And that's really my crusade as far as the mom portion is concerned. Like you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have perfect yoga videos to be able to attract an audience and connect with real people. You don't have to be, you can have curves. It's okay. You know, you don't have to look a certain way either that you can be this real person and people will love you more. And one of the things that I always lean on when it comes to connecting with my community is I tell them, you guys help me stay real. As a real person, you keep me super grounded because as soon as I start worrying about what something looks like, it shifts my audience in a direction where they're not comfortable. But if I stay in my lane and I stay true to Ashley as a person, they're cool too. And just a quick anecdote, when I first started this, I struggled with trying to make everything perfect. Like I was worried about the kids being in the video. If there was noise, I would stop. If I was um, teaching an online yoga class, I would completely stop and start it over and record it five or six times. And then finally, I was just so burnt out with that whole song and dance that I was like, I don't care if my kid's in the video. And as soon as I stopped worrying about that, it's like the floodgates open and all these moms showed up and all these women showed up and they were all in for what we were, for what I was teaching and I was doing and the message that I was uh, providing and conveying because it was real. It wasn't like, it, it wasn't mass marketed, mass created. It wasn't perfectly okay. perfect. Perfectly perfect isn't the best way to go sometimes. <laughs> I've never been able to manage that. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> it much is work. way too much work. <laughs> okay. I think that probably kind of segues nicely into your book, Zen and the Wonder Woman. Is that just another form of what you're trying to achieve in your in your studio? Yeah, it is exactly that. It's it's the written form of what I'm trying to achieve. It's very simple. It's a small, quick read. I kept it that way for a reason. It shares uh, a bit about me and my story and about how I got to uh, becoming a yoga instructor. A bit of a spoiler alert. I had really bad postpartum and I was crazy and I was making everyone else around me crazy. And I knew that I needed to to get back to good, if you will. I won't say fix because there's there was nothing broken. I just needed to find balance for myself. And I did that through yoga. And what I found in yoga and the meditation and taking the time for myself that if I started my day with intention and started my day in this balanced, safe space and place, if you will, within my mind, then the rest of my day reflected that balance and that safety that I had found. So in the book in Zen and the Wonder Woman Complex, which you can find on Amazon and on my website as well, The Fit Yoga Factory, we talk about how you can build your toolkit to be able to duplicate the same results that I got uh, when I start doing start doing what I refer to as your miraculous morning because it just changes it changes your day it changed a lot of things for me within that time I was still working before I ha- it was prior to me having the yoga studio when I wrote the book within 30 days of doing it I had gotten a new teaching job. I had doubled my income and I had lost like 15 pounds in 30 days. And the only thing that I had changed was taking on this, this practice, this daily practice of setting my intentions for, for that 30 day span. And it really makes such a difference. It's, it's, um, it's very interesting. So I was like, well, I got to share this with ladies and cause I can't be the only one that this, that this can help. And um, so, yeah, so that's oh, what that's the book great. ended up being about. That's really good. And you say it's on Amazon or your website and we'll give you contact, contact deals details yeah. later but that's zen and the wonder woman complex that's great you don't have your yoga studio so ha- what led you to to decide to create a yoga studio i had the online kind of studio going i was i fancied myself my moniker was the leader of the yoga mom rebellion because we were kind of doing yoga our way if you will and I had it online and what was happening is I was having a whole host of women saying hey where can we take class with you in person and about the third or fourth person that asked me that question I was like well maybe that's a sign and maybe I need to figure this in-person thing out in my in my town I live a small town in Tarpon Springs 
I had driven up, driven up and down our downtown Tarpon Avenue a bazillion times. I, I, I was born and raised here, so I've been up and down the street forever. And the same businesses have had our the storefronts forever. Well, I drove down the street one day, and sure enough, one of them was open. The building is a hundred years old; it needs a bunch of repairs. So, what? So it made it within my price range, which was great. <laughs> and and I knew that I could pull on family, friends, and some magic from the universe to make it happen at that price range. So that's pretty much what I set off and did. And we started that in May of 2017. I saw I saw the place in April. We signed the lease in August. It is now 2018, and and we're here. And we've been running in the studio full force since Valentine's Day. This is very, very new. Um, And what it's done is it's morphed my business on a level that I did not know was possible. So I love teaching online. I really, really do enjoy it. And I like the, the connection that you build with the online community. But still, nothing beats being in someone's space and place and in their energy and rubbing elbows with folks and giving hugs and high fives and having a wine down Wednesday, which is something that we do where (laughs) we actually have wine and we sit around on the yoga floor and have a little potluck and talk and we enjoy each other. We do a little bit of a class, but we do a little more hanging out and it's been wonderful. So that is something that you can't get in the online space. It's really filling my cup up when it comes to that people and that that input and that connection that we still need as human beings, because after all, we are social creatures, whether we always want to be social or not. So would you say Wind Down Wednesday, which I really love that name, is part of your community building efforts? Oh, yeah, it is definitely a part of my community building for sure, because it kind of gets rid of the Ashley is the yoga studio owner, you know, (laughs) and it gets rid of that junk where they're like where people may or may not feel how that I'm approachable or whatnot, whatever, whatever, whatever stories that come along with people because as people, we tend to create stories about things, whether we know that for sure or not. So um, it, it's, it's kind of how we exist and operate in the world. Doing Wind Down Wednesday, myself and another teacher do it, it allows us to connect on a human level and it helps break down some of those barriers, uh, I think, that come along with being in any position of quote unquote authority for whatever it's worth. Because I try, I, I will come in and teach and there are times where some of the people don't even know that I'm the owner. They're... There are even times where it's super fun, where mm-hmm. we'll have, uh, we do what's called a first Friday here. And I am the only African American in the room. <laughs> I am the studio owner. And my staff will be towards the door talking to people and greeting people. And people will talk to them as though they're the owner because they just assume that they are. I just hang in the back and I just let the show roll on. And if they need me, they can wave to Ashley and say, hey, she can answer your questions. She's the owner, whatever. And the look on people's face is so entertaining. So it's very rare that I try and to get in the this is my place mode and I think uh doing Wednesday wind down gets rid of some of that junk that's not necessary if somebody was trying to build their own community what what kinds of things would you suggest they do or what advice would you have for them be patient and really think on the fact that know that this is for you and know that you are running a business. Just because it's a yoga studio doesn't excuse it from being a business. That you're going to have to market. You're going to have to be able to sell. You're going to have to be able to talk to people beyond what you're teaching on the mat. You may even have to be a little tough at times when it comes to, like in our case, dealing with contractors. You'll have to kind of wear a yoga hat and a business hat and be clear in what those boundaries are if you're venturing off in this particular direction. Because I know for me in the beginning, when we first started this endeavor uh, last year, that those waters were super, super muddy for me. And it created this battle between 
Ashley, the yoga teacher, and Ashley, the businesswoman. Because let's face it, in business, sometimes you have to make super tough decisions. And, but knowing the balance in yoga for me has been knowing that I can do them from, from a caring and kind place and do them from a place that's within my character as a person. So my advice would be just know what that looks like for you. Know what your boundaries are and know that you're going to have to wear a few hats in the beginning and be willing to wear those hats or be willing to surround yourself with people that can help you wear them. Yeah, that's very good advice. We all aren't good at everything. And so it's good to find people that are good at stuff you're not. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've found that with podcasting because technology is not my thing. <laughs> that, those are really good. That's really good advice Almost for almost anything, I might add. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's just knowing who you are and what your boundaries are for all of these different hats that you put on. Why did you want to do a, why did you want to build your own business instead of say working for someone else or just doing uh, a few classes? Well, I did popcorn teaching for a while. I taught at gyms, uh, I taught at rec center, I taught at after school program. And for me, it was creating more chaos in my life than I personally wanted because I was driving here, there and everywhere and still trying to be available to handle mom duties, pick up kids, drop off kids, do all that kind of stuff. So this was kind of a way for me to create a to package it all in one space and place, if you will, to where I could do podcasts, I can uh, run my classes here, I can run any other workshop that I want to out of here. It gave me a safe space, to, safe space to do that. Then the other piece for me that was huge is after I went through my 200 hour yoga teacher training, it's like this door opened for me and I was like, this is my jam. This is what I want to do with my life. How can I incorporate my job to fund my yoga dreams, if you will, of furthering my education. So the next step for me, I'm in the midst of, I've already done over half of it, in the midst of finishing my 500 hour yoga certification. And then I'm going to do yoga therapy, become a yoga therapist. So that's my next venture, venture and from there, an Ayurvedic practitioner, so uh, or a naturopathic practitioner, rather. I needed a way to fund those, and I didn't want to be pulled out of the yoga world, per se, to do those things. Because I found that balancing those, the changes that were happening in me, and still being in a quote-unquote real job, were, were rough at times. I worked for Pinellas County Schools and I enjoyed the kids and being in the classroom with the kids. There were just other things that came along with it that I didn't love. And those would always bump up against bump up against my feelings of what I wanted to do. So it just came to a point where I had to decide, do I immerse myself in this yoga world, including my day-to-day -day job and what I do for a living? Or do I kind of keep living in this duality of, I teach and I am a teacher and I am also a yoga instructor on the side. So I, I'm, I like that my side hustle has become my day job these days. So yoga has become front and center instead of a side job. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Yoga is front and center and, uh, and I like it that way. Okay, good. Basically, what I think you're telling me <laughs> is that you have a healthy mix of students from 13 to 73, which is a large span of ages there. You have lots of kids stuff and you work with moms. And you say in your introduction or what you sent to me was that you have a unique system that can be adapted for people of any ability. So can you kind of talk about that a little bit? Sure. So what we try to do in classes is provide modifications and connect with those students that may need a little help on the mat. And we try and usher them to classes that can give them the basics. And then they move throughout what other classes that are on the schedule from there. Even if you have never done yoga before, and you decide that you want to come to a 5.30 hot yoga <laughs> class, though that is not necessarily how I suggest you go about it, that doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't 
that doesn't exempt you from being able to attend the class. Our uh, philosophy is come in and we will provide you modifications, give you kind of like, I, I like to call these days, a mild, medium, and hot version of said pose to be able to adjust it to your body. There's no reason that you should suffer through a class. It's on us as teachers to provide adjustments where we can. What we're learning with that method is that sometimes we do have to uh, push those edges and boundaries for people and maybe usher them in a different direction then maybe the hot class is not ready maybe the hot class is not ready for you yet and it may just be that they need to try something different and we're okay and we're real about having those conversations because our ultimate goal and our ultimate concern is to keep people safe but if they like it and they love it then we like it and we love it and we encourage them through working through the practice our approach is a very open unique approach that we're trying to guide people to where they need to be and not discourage them about showing up to an intermediate advanced class when they may not have taken yoga in 20 years. I used to, I'm, I'm taking a sabbatical this year, but I did teach seniors for many years and you would get the seniors that either had something happen to their body surgery or something which put them into a different class, that they really should be doing more of a chair class than a mat class. And I never was very successful in trying to move them. So I'd be very interested to know how you manage that. What I typically do, and this is an ever-evolving thing for us, but I will give you what's working for us now. (laughs) I usually guide them to another class that I personally teach on the schedule. So it it takes, it gets rid of the, oh, she's sending me to some other teacher where it's no, you and I will get a one, a more one-on-one interaction together and we can work through some of these poses. So how about you go to XYZ class, whatever class that may be, or I've even offered um, in some cases where it's a real concern for me where I'll say, how about we do a little one-on-one work before class and we can work through these things together. Now I have that benefit because studio owner so I can come in and go with the breeze. So if somebody says I want to show up 15 minutes early, we work on five or six things we can do that. But as of lately, ushering them to another class with me has worked. But that's not to say that somebody can't come in here tomorrow and it not work at all. Yeah. That I understand. I mean, you know, <laughs> I'm just being so just being straightforward with you. You know, right now that seems to work um, because that is a hard conversation yeah. to have and sometimes and you don't want to crush somebody's spirit and that's why I always say this class isn't working for you not you're not working for this class this class isn't what our mm. class right now that we're providing is not what your body needs let us give you what your body needs because I don't want them to be like well my pigeon doesn't look like so-and-so's pigeon so now I'm not going to come back to this class no, get a block, bring the floor to you. We'll make it work. You know, I'm, I'm very in, let's figure out a way to get through this. Not that there's something wrong with your body. So you need to go to the beginner's class. You know, that that's a very, <laughs> that's a very different yeah. place to come from. And I, and I, I guess too, the other thing that we have to balance and the more I talk, the more I think of people that have come in when, <laughs> When you have an older woman who has maybe run her entire life and she has had a a hip replacement and she's like, I want to do all this stuff. And you're like, okay, here's how we're going to do all this stuff. Here's, here are the modifications and the things that we're going to work through to make that happen in your body and where you are right now. And we, I tend as of lately to, to have deeper conversations about accepting things as they are until they can move to something else. So I've tried to integrate integrate and weave that through my classes and my verbiage while I'm teaching to maybe hopefully get over some of those struggles and classes that, that people have where their bodies just aren't doing what they used to. And it's always a shock to people, isn't it? That they, they used yeah. to be able to do all this stuff and all of a sudden, <laughs> especially yeah. with yoga, because you're asking them to do things that they don't usually normally do. So it really kind of brings it home to them. No, I was just thinking that same thing. So I do, I, my personal practice, I've become an Ashtanga practitioner and I love it. I love it because it's so darn hard and it gets me out of my head and deeply into my body and my, in my practice. And I did the primary series this morning. And at one point in our mazillionth uh, vinyasa, I actually had the thought of, 
what the heck am I doing this? <laughs> Why is this so hard? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why on this day is this so gosh darn hard? And then I had to like reel back through my mind and go, well, Ashley, you taught a whole bunch of classes in the past few weeks. So your body is probably a little worn and not accustomed to, you know, this is a different place and space for you. But the idea that, oh yeah, I'm, 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 I'll be 36 this year. So at 35 years old, I'm going to teach 20 yoga classes and then we're going to do the primary series on the weekends. Cause that's a good idea, you know, <laughs> that, and then that it's not going to hurt either. You know, like I, I, I'm guilty of it too, of going, well, I could do that yeah. last week and now my hip doesn't do that. Yes. So yeah, that that's a good thing to remember is that maybe as yoga teachers, we also have that problem. So, <laughs> or that, that, um, yeah. So yeah. it makes us more empathetic, hopefully. <laughs> what I'm really astounded by uh, is that since you started really full-time in February on Valentine's Day, and yet you have an incredible variety and amount of classes, do you have any advice to someone on how you really start something with such a big bang and it seems to be going really well for you? <laughs> okay. So the reason that we run so many classes, all right, so this is my pet peeve. No, this is, this is a learning lesson for me, but this far into it, it is working. So I'm not going to knock it, but my pet peeve was with the studios that were closer to me here, they did not run a regular schedule. And the only studios that I could get to that ran a regular schedule were about 45 minutes to an hour away from me. So I was like, look, my that was my big thing if i was going to open a studio we would run a regular schedule and people would know that we're open my way of doing that was putting 43 classes on the schedule getting three teachers three to four teachers and then myself as a sub so we could make that happen what that has done is help us accelerate the building of our yoga community because we're open all day long for the most part now we do break the schedule where we don't have classes between noon and 3.45 or so. We come back on at 3.45 because we catch a teacher crowd and that, that class is actually pretty busy. I didn't want to be the studio that's never open because that seems to be an ongoing thing in this community. Uh, and then the other studios that I came across that were super successful, they ran regular hours. That was the other thing that I noticed kind of in my research. So that's what prompted me to put the number of classes that I have on the schedule. So that's part of it. And then the other thing that that is a work in progress for us are weekends. We only run one class on the weekends right now, which is not normal for typical studios, but we've been open six of the other seven days of the week. And we've been here all day long from 5.30 a.m. some nights all the way till 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. With that type of schedule during the week, our weekends are a little are a little slimmer than than some other studios may be. But it was just my pet peeve, Stephanie. To be honest with you, I I just bugged me that places weren't open. You know, I wanted to catch a class at uh, three o'clock and there was nothing to go to. So I, I'd say, well, if I'm looking for a class at this time of day, I can't be the only one. And and that's been true to form. That we've we've kept pretty darn busy, even with having, I think we have That's about 43 amazing. classes on the schedule. You sound pretty excited and up and, and it seems to be working well for you. Is that, am I getting the right vibes there? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's working really well for us. We're, we're enjoying it. It's a work in progress. It's an ever evolving thing. What I'm learning and uh, I'm glad that the the studio that I've been attending is they're very helpful in helping me grow as a studio as well. We're about 45 minutes to an hour or so away from one another. I serve a completely different community than they do. And they've been at it for a few years now. And they've been very helpful in terms of giving me the advice to allow the business model to change and to flow as well and to not be so so married to whatever your idea was in the beginning. And I will say, and even in the short short time that we've been open, that we've been building to get open, it has changed and the things that we can provide and the things that we can do. So essentially it's asking the yoga teacher to flow. How funny is that? To, to do what you do best and be able to go with the flow. Do you as a yoga studio owner get together with other yoga studio owners? You say there's one that's been really helpful, but is that kind of a thing that happens is that 
the, all the owners get together. I assume you have some similar issues you would want to discuss. I, I don't, that has not, no. Uh, I think I'm fortunate in the place that I've found that they're willing to do that. There's one other that's in that same area that that they're willing to help as well. But I just don't think that's the case. I think for whatever reason, there's this brand of competition that goes around. And I'm of the uh, of the idea that the right people are going to find you and I don't have to compete with anyone but myself. Like, not everyone is going to like my style as a yoga teacher, as a person, as a whatever. So you just don't come to my studio. You go somewhere else that suits your needs. And I'm not, I'm not above saying that people are going to find what is their cup of tea and they'll continue to drink from it. And that's awesome. I think, however, for whatever reason in the yoga world, uh, especially now and in some areas, it is a very saturated market. So competition may be a really, maybe a real thing for folks. I just know for myself that I'm not necessarily worried about it because I can't be. I can't be looking at them and looking at what I'm doing all at the same time. I'm just trying to keep focused on where I'm going. And I think that honestly, I mean, even if I could roll it back to just being in simple yoga class, you're going to have some other person that's an advanced practitioner that feels obligated to compete against you in some way, shape or form. I think that's just (laughs) the nature of the beast. And I think some people are going to be different, (laughs) be difficult. And um, that's just a part of business. That's the only way I can best describe it. And last but not least, in in this vein of of some people are just a-holes, whether they do (laughs) yoga or not. And you have to leave them where they are. So I want to give people uh, your contact details, especially so they can um, find out about your book. And so if you want to explore a little bit more what Ashley's doing, the website is www.fityogafactory.com. And Facebook is the same. So is Instagram, the Fit Yoga Factory. And her periscope is uh, Ashley Adams 1. Twitter is Fit Yoga Factory. And Zen... And the Wonder Woman Complex, is you can get on Ashley's website, but it's also available on Amazon. That's where I looked at it. And it's got a great cover. I love the cover. And it tells you how to, to build your, your toolbox to help you be uh, a great Thank mom you. and help with your own self-care. Ashley, is there anything you'd like to add that we haven't covered uh, in the podcast today? I think the only thing I'll share in closing is whatever it is that you want to do, be willing to step out there and give it a try and know that it's okay to put yourself out there and and you will find the tribe that supports you 110%. I can almost guarantee it. Thank you, Ashley. You've given us some great tips on several different areas, but I really appreciate you talking a bit about the business. Thanks so much for being on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you for that wonderful interview. If you would like to be a guest on Changing the Face of Yoga, please go to my website, www.yogalightness.com.au, and under the Changing the Face of Yoga tab, you can complete the Be Our Guest form. After reviewing the form and finding it applicable to this podcast, we will send you a link to schedule an interview. Please download, review, and tell your friends of any podcasts that are of interest to you and to them. If you would like to contact me, send an email to info at yogalightness.com.au. And thank you for listening to Changing the Face of Yoga.